Hello everyone, Declan here. I'm recording something that is shorter and slightly off topic to what we do normally, but we have explored off topic shows before, so I wanted to expand on that with these short videos dedicated to the Ubisoft Forward event. Now I won't be doing a huge in-depth chat, as I have done a write-up on our Tumblr, which is in the description below. However, I did want to offer my thoughts on the stream and four games that really caught my eye. Now a small disclaimer is there won't be much chat about Mirage here because we are very active on Twitter and Discord, unpicking what we saw and discussing what we would like to see. But also we have some huge podcasts I've sought ideas in the works for content we can do about Mirage. So the first game that caught my eye is actually an Assassin's Creed title, and that is Assassin's Creed Jade. Now Jade is a free to play action adventure, open world sort of Assassin's Creed game. Not much is known except for the closed beta that is currently coming and we can already uh, pre-register which I have done. From what we do know from what we do know is that this probably will be the most accessible Assassin's Creed title ever made. Because at the moment with the price hikes, Assassin's Creed does throw a boundary where some players may not be able to catch up because of pricing. Having a more free to play open world game that is on the go gives players a chance to play Assassin's Creed and dive into its lore and world. There will possibly be some mobile elements to the control scheme and how it works, but I am hoping that there is a controller support and a potential PC port in the future. Titles like Tower of Fantasy and Genshin have thrived due to a PC port. I think as well there is some questions about the monetization as it is a free to play title and the game does need to make money for Ubisoft. I think the best way they could handle this is if they do gacha pulls for weapons or community skins. I'm hoping, hoping we see some more news soon because it has huge potential. The next title is Avatar for Tears of Pandora, a phenomenal looking game. It has gunplay with guns and bows and arrows that look fantastic, mounted combat as well as there is one moment where we see an Ikrim where you're on your Ikrain shooting a bow at a flying helicopter that just looked epic. But what really drew to me is how Ubisoft has created the magic of James Cameron's avatar. There is a lot of verticality to the world, as it is based on the forest realm from the first movie. There's plants that interact to touch, there's a lot of vibrant colours, and everything looks really smooth. There is a really cool detail where we jump off a floating island and summon a Ikran, which is a flying mount. And then in some more gameplay, we can see the mount doing battle rules. And it really looks a lot of fun. I'm excited for this because I feel it will be a very immersive avatar experience. And with Zequel now on Disney Plus, and Zequel to that one not due to 2025 or 2024, I believe, it's a really good time for gamers to dive in. That one is coming in December, so I'm not too far away. The next title that I want to look at is Star Wars Outlaws. Now we are in a realm at the moment where Star Wars has become big and we are inundated in TV shows, animated shows and games, but a lot of them feature Jedi, which is great because the Jedi, the Force and lightsabers are a lot of fun, so it's really good to see that Ubisoft go more of a rogue approach where, there's, where your character is basically thief by the looks of things. I really do need to do a bigger deep dive and I will be doing that on our part 2 of the Tumblr blog. So just from what I noticed the story trailer is we are a thief, there's some open world, some space combat, you have a companion called Nyx which is able to fetch your weapons which look really fun. But the complete focus on blasters and guns is unique because last time I saw this done was the Battlefront 2 which is a PvP experience. So I'm really excited to play an open world game with a character using blasters instead of just a lightsaber. Although it would be cool if your character can find a lightsaber and she does wield it. That, that might be fun. Don't know if it's possible in lore, but it could be fun. Now, arguably the highlight of the whole stream would be Prince of Persia Lost Crown. First shown in Summer, Fe in Summer Fest, this is basically the next title 13 years in the making. The last big title to release was Forgotten Sons in 2010, and since then Prince of Persia has been on a hiatus, so it's really good to see a new series come back. 
What makes this one special is instead of going down the Sands of Time route, which is a action adventure sort of game with a lot of puzzles and movement, they've gone back to their roots of 2D platforming. But it's been changed up a little bit. Instead of just being a standard 2D platformer, it is actually a metrovania. So there'll be a lot more emphasis on puzzle solving, combat, and re-exploring the world. From what we've seen in the brief gameplay trailers, your character is very acrobatic, which is true to the nature of Prince of Persia. Combat looks flashy, fun, and there is also timed abilities. Everything shown is really shaping up to be exciting, and it's good to see Prince of Persia finally making a return. So overall, this stream was a strong stream. There is a lot shown, a lot discussed, and a lot of hype touched more upon in the Tumblr blog. But these are the four games that caught me the most. Mirage is one I have pre-ordered and I'm already excited for. There is another title called X Defiant, which I am excited about. But if this small off-topic chat goes well and you guys enjoy it, I will actually like to do more X Defiant topics as a smaller 5 minute, 6 minute short. So, closing thoughts is Ubisoft is doing things right, in my opinion. Avatar is December, Prince of Persia is January, Mirage is October this year, so we got Mirage. X Defiant um, is actually summer, so X Defiant, free to play shooter, competitive, then Mirage, then Avatar then Prince Persia, and then Outlaws. The future is looking bright, and I think gamers should be happy with what Ubisoft has on offer. Thank you all, and we'll see you in our next full podcast episode.